Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So today I have Rob and Josh on from Cornucopius. I've had these guys on twice before at this stage. It has been a while since they've been on. So time to find out what all the latest is in the project. Rob, Josh, very welcome back on the channel. Hey, Paul. Yeah, it's good to see you again, man. So since we've talked, you guys have actually started your own YouTube channel as well for Kopi Cafe. So yeah. every week you come out and do an episode and give the latest on the project. You guys always have a drink in it as well. So just in case, I did make sure I brought a drink on the show today. Non-alcoholic, uh, Erdinger. Can hey. Definitely I'll... recommend it. Okay. Okay. I'll have to try that one. I've actually got, I thank you for that uh, tribute to Kopi Cafe there. I've got a, uh, it's a non-alcoholic, uh, what, let's see, what is it? An IPA from Athletic Brewing. It's freaking delicious. I miss the whole craft beer thing because I, I stopped drinking at, before that happened. So now, thankfully, there's craft in a nice. beers. What about you, Rob? Well, tonight it is actually Tuesday night. And Tuesday night, as people in Discord know, I usually go and play a game of pool. So I have actually been to the pub and I've had a few Guinnesses already. After this, interview, Paul's going. I'll, I'll be able to get any information out of this guy. I, I want. This after, is great. That's it. After this interview, I will be going back to the pub to continue my game. But tonight, I am drinking a cup of whipped cream. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Okay. Uh, okay. I'll leave it to that's Rob. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's outstanding. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Lovely. So. Jumping straight in, look, I'm going to presume most people watching this know what Cornucopius is. I'll put all the links below for anyone who doesn't. Most people coming here now are looking for the latest, things like the land and different questions that are out there. So I suppose what's happened since we last talked? So you guys have had some sales. You have the Kopi Wiki. There's a lot of stuff has happened in the last few months, I suppose, since you've been on. Yeah, man, we've had a, a tremendous wild year uh, with lots of, Lots of stressors and lots of successes already. Yeah. There's there's a ton that's happened, and uh, it's it's crazy. Crypt, crypto building a business in crypto is just so different than building a business in the traditional world. Things happen a lot more quickly. You're moving uh, at breakneck paces, and so yeah, we've had a lot that's happened. We've done, I believe, three three NFT sales. Is that right, mm -hmm. Rob? Four? Cool. Is it four? Okay, so four NFT sales, and each of those had their own successes and failures. We've uh, implemented our token, uh, minted on Cardano. Uh, so there is a Cardano native token for Kopi now. Uh, and one thing I will say there is that a lot of people have been requesting a bridge uh, because we're also on BSC, and we are anxiously uh, working on that. And we have, a, we have a group that's in development on it, Chainport.io. Uh, but we're also looking at other solutions as well. It's just we, we're really ready to get that bridge for you guys. A lot of people want it. Uh, it's in the works. But that's one big success for us. So now we're also on Cardano, which is our, our you know, that's our chain. It's where we want to be. That's our community. And uh, so it's very exciting to be on there. Uh, what else? The Kopi Wiki. Rob can comment well, on the Kopi Wiki. That's also, huge. The Kopi token is, is also on Binance as well. So, so we are cross-chain. So you can find the Kopi token on the Binance Smart Chain and on Cardano. Like Josh right. says, we're building the bridge. There is, there is a difference in prices. It's quite a big difference in prices. But when the bridge that, that, you know, that we're building, that will be for all native tokens on Cardano to go to, to Binance and from Binance. So that's real infrastructure that we're introducing to, to Cardano. Um, and then when that eventually does come out, um, I think we're weeks away from that now then the copy price will via arbitrage it will be the same on both chains yeah exactly and then so yeah to to finish fleshing out that you know question copy wiki uh, I, i'm sure rob's got plenty to tell you about that so that's a whole nother topic on its own but yeah we've we've had a a tremendously successful year we've switched to unreal engine so unreal engine is I've Unreal Engine 5, sorry, we we were on Unreal Engine 4. We've When the uh, Unreal Engine 5 update came out, that was an amazing uh, upgrade, enormous. It allows us to do a lot of things. You're going to be able to see that in this video that's hopefully released on, on Friday or Saturday. 
but uh, yeah, that w we'll include the the video link uh, to our cinematic trailer in the description of this video, uh, hopefully. But yeah, that's uh, we've got some remarkable stuff happening with the land sale as well. And then uh, you know, one final thing I was just going to talk about was our our development, everything that we've developed, all of the NFTs that we've sold. Uh, we've been well, the two most recent ones have been done on our own NFT tech. So we did an OG Mint, and that's that's our own technology that we've been building for five or six months. And uh, the OG went went OG Mint went incredibly well. Yeah. The uh, NFT to Tree Mint, which was uh, to benefit and get a lot of trees planted, but also stress test our platform, went incredibly well. Sold out in twenty seconds. So. We're really excited about having our own tech and the ability to to add every feature that we want. And uh, so the next NFT to tree sale will have occurred probably before this video goes live because that's coming up here on Wednesday. So um, that that probably already occurred. Hopefully it went really well. Um, but yeah, that updates you to the uh, for for you know most of what's occurred since the last time we chatted with you. Yeah, I think it's I been think. it's been about six months ago since. I've when we oh, so there's more than that then if it's oh, six yeah. months because I mean, we launched the token on bsc yeah well, we we first paul was the very first interview that that we did on, on cardano and we're then, slacking with you paul we we need to yeah. be at least every three months yeah you're uh, gonna have to start uh that's coming on a lot more i think the very first one we done was kind of the introduction early of cornucopius to people out there built one of the first big yeah. games i would yeah. say on cardano and then the next one I was looking back, we announced the bubbles at that stage yeah. that everyone got their own bubble. So, oh, wow. Um, so we're talking November ish, yeah. right? This, this yeah. is why we had to introduce Kopi Cafe because a week in, in crypto is crazy. We, we, yeah, so yeah. much happened from week to week that we just had to, you know, yeah, this Kopi Cafe is where Rob and I update each other on what we've been working yeah. on. <laughs> Just kidding. And but for that's kind anyone of who hasn't seen it yet, it's where Rob generally lets a few things slip. So I'll put the links below for anyone links, who wants yeah. to make sure that they subscribe to that as well. But just before Rob gets into the wiki, I suppose you've covered lots of questions that I had to come up there. You've covered with the bridges, really popular topic I get all the time now is when we can bring them across. Rob has touched on the difference in price. So I'd say within 24 hours of the bridge going live, the price will be basically the same across chains I, I because you will have arbitrage there and um the sales as well your own platform that was something i think we touched on that in our second interview but it was very early stages back then but i have been in the last two sales the og and the nft23 both went went extremely smooth so you'll be using the same for it's the fruit tree tomorrow tomorrow yes. as we record this video and then the land sale will come up as well. We'll get into yeah. land in a few minutes. But uh, Rob, do you want to talk about what the wiki is for anyone who hasn't seen that? Yeah. So, so, so the kit, the Kopi wiki. While researching the project, um, I, I, when I was looking at other projects and, and other games, the the majority of the information that I found was from fan based projects, and it kind of reminded me of when I was 12, 13, 14. And I was, I used to get Spectrum magazines, you know, from the shops. And then nowadays you can get Xbox magazines and PlayStation magazines, and they'd have walkthroughs of games. And I thought, this is, this, this is something that I want to see for our game. I know that other content creators and, and other supporters of our, of our channel are going to create this. But what I found with those is they're always kind of half finished. And I hate for things to be half finished. I want everything to, to be absolutely perfect. Um, so there was there was many reasons to build well, the, this Kopi Wiki, and and it's it's when we launched it literally a, a, a few days ago. It had 186 pages that everybody can go and see all kind of content. Now it's it's got over 190 because I'm forever tinkering with it. Yeah. And so I've which pages do I need to go and review? Look at the roadmap. <laughs> The, the roadmap because we've no. now we've added nft tree too that pick, the, there's so much stuff that the roadmap of, of would probably be my home page um, but you know paul to elaborate on that it's uh something that rob has poured a ton of his heart and soul into um and really it is, is a reflection of 
all the work of our team iterating back and forth, ideating a lot of the ideas that Rob and I have had all along, uh, ideas from the team, ideas from everybody that's involved in our project now, because and even ideas from the community. So we've got a lot incorporated in that. And he's just been really just pouring it all out there. And then we all had to get in there and, and edit and add to it and, and various things. Yeah, but I, it's, I just it's going it. to be, I mean, I eventually tens of thousands point. of pages, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, I mean, I just I just provided a starting point. Now, we, we met Jake on Kopi Cafe a few weeks ago. Jake is the, is the product owner. So this is a proper product for us. You know, we, we treat it exactly the same as we as we do for the mobile product, for the um, for the full game, for for the multiplayer, for all our different sections, all our different departments. They our art department. They they all have different different product owners. So the Wikipedia, you know, it, it does more than than just talk about the the game. It's a, it's an entry point for for newcomers. It's to be used for our new staff to, to onboard them. Um, it's a source of truth directly from us, so, so there's no kind of guessing. It's a living document. So this literally, like I say, could change daily or it could change weekly. It has behind the scenes stuff. So if you look at our NPCs, you'll see early prototypes of what they look like. And if you look at Farmer Joe, Farmer Joe looks so different now from, from our early mock-ups. It's like, I, I think, should I include these in the wiki? But yeah, we're, uh, we're doing well, warts and all in there. Yeah, to Rob's point, the you know one cool thing that I I think will be in the wiki is an evolution of our artwork. So you'll see yeah. a lot of stuff in there that's from an Unreal Engine four, and then very soon, as we start to populate the wiki with new material, uh, you're going to start to see some of our Unreal Engine five yeah. artwork, which puts us leaps and bounds ahead of so many other projects out there because and it's not like oh we're so impressive we're I, i'm only saying that because we were fortunate enough because of the timing of the release of unreal engine 5 and the fact that our team what had been counting on this that we were able to take advantage of it from day one and they had already been working on learning it and and, and all sorts of stuff so uh we didn't have to change like you know there's companies out there that have been embedded in unreal engine 4 and their game's been live for two years they can't uh make the switch because it's too much of an operational burden that's going to take them six months to a year to make the switch so they have to really plan that and strategically yeah. uh you know make that happen and we're we're lucky enough that we're not released yet and we get to now the timing of this release allows us to take advantage of it right away that's enormous competitive advantage for us. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, we're, um, the last time, you know, we spoke to you, Paul, was probably six months ago when we wrote our white paper. And the Wikipedia is a is a really advanced version of the white paper, kind of like a fan zone. And, and it also talks about our company. You know, what we were, we were self-funded. We kind of had to work out where we were going to be in years, years from then. Uh, so we were using off-the-shelf Unreal Engine Marketplace assets. Um, we put all that in our white paper and we laid it out. This is our strategy. Um, and the next phase is we're going to introduce our own art department and we're going to build our own art style. So at that stage, we didn't know what our art style was going to be. The team that we took on almost, I think, from, from, from month two took us in a completely different artwork direction than, than what we'd imagined. So we didn't think we were going AAA, but when we when we saw the talent that we brought on board, we I suppose we we upped the budget. We went in this different direction, and we thought, now that we've seen what we can achieve, we have to be more ambitious. Yeah, and well, we just never look back. I think it's just amazing what what the whole team have achieved great to hear like some of the graphics that we see out there for unreal engine 5 now it's incredible what can actually be done in the game if some of the scenes that have come out of it i've seen different samples on youtube not even just your game but some of the stuff people have done in it and yeah. it's hard to tell the difference in an actual movie compared to what's created in unreal engine now so. yeah i mean you can literally get a real life look yeah uh which yeah. we we are going for that so we won't be taking that kind of approach we want it to have a bit more of a fun feel to it yeah. but there's the the power of it is I, I think remarkable. when you when you look at like the matrix example when when you see these really real life unreal engine 5 and it's pushing the engine to the limits all those are single player games 
we're creating multiplayer games we're expecting hundreds of people to to be within the same server and and, and across all the number of players so we're not going to that ultra realistic edge but as you'll see from the video we're pretty close we're, we're miles ahead from unreal engine 4 we're a lot further ahead than yeah a lot of other projects and, and to be to, and to aim for that for multiplayer i think what what we're achieving at the moment is amazing and then fast forward five ten years when pcs and, and internet connection catches up then we can go to to the matrix star where everything is realistic yeah. but for now i think we're really pushing the limits and i, I think that, yeah the, the team is is absolutely incredible yeah, on that as well, actually, one of the questions that I can't remember who in the community put in was about characters in the game. Will people be able to customize? So you mentioned Farmer Joe there, how he's changed. Yeah, since we he have started. an avatar that's, uh, there's a avatar builder in our system. And we've done, there was one video that showed that, and that's now on, I don't know what version, but we that, that was you before, it. wasn't it? Yes, it was, but um, and and we still have a avatar builder on UE five now. Yeah. It's on. Uh, you know, I don't know what version we're on at this point, but yes, we have that, mm -hmm. and you can, and and we're talking about like the quality of your traditional level games, and even ahead of that, in a lot of ways, in terms of what you can do to change the hair, to change the eyebrows, to change the eye color, to change the skin color, to change the body type and morph, morph the body type. All of these things are, are possibility with our avatar builder, which makes it a lot of fun. So, yeah. The, yeah. When, when, you, when you look at the metahumans on UE5, the, the, the characters are built in what's called bones. So in, in the, the bone of a metahuman is just over a thousand bones, and that's the entire human body, which is absolutely incredible. Our Unreal Engine 4 characters were about 200 bones. Now the the UE five version is is currently uh, just over five hundred bones, which means you know the 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 detail and and we can go from muscly yeah. all the way to skinny to tall. Yeah, the the new avatar creation is it, it, wait wait till nice. that comes out. And will another one as well was will people be able to bring characters from other NFTs on Cardano? Will they be able to bring? I think Clay's three D Clay's was one that was mentioned. We'll There's a variety of, partnerships. of levels of interoperability. Okay, so the the easy answer to that is yes, with an NFT, you'll be able to put an NFT image on the wall in your home personal bubble type yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. So that's the that's the the low hanging fruit. But the degree of interoperability that we have really and and our vision is eventually to have that possibility where characters can come in from another game. But the amount of complexity involved in bringing in uh, the animations or bringing in the variety of different, the, the structure, like Rob said, the, the bone structure, all of these different things that have to be, would have to be imported in. So it's almost like there's going to be stages where, okay, does their, Unre are they coming in from Unreal Engine? If so, great. Does it meet this criteria? If so, then yes, we can start to bring stuff in. So there's, there's a lot of complexity to that and because there's so much that goes into the development of just a character that walks around in the game. Yeah, I, I think we there's definitely have to manage expectations because the, there's a lot of projects that we're, that we're looking at integrating at, at the moment and we've looked at their assets and it's almost, I don't want to be disrespectful for them, but they're almost like the, the VHS world bringing those into a 4K world. You know, the, there's there's difference in, in the quality. So we're well, But it's also that or completely just a different style. You know, they're, they're yeah, just yeah. totally different style yeah. that may not fit. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're at the really, we're, we're at the high end. So what we're, we're, we will do is we'll release a style guide and, and we will help people to build their assets to ours. But also at the same time, you know we're building our game as well so so there is a timeline where we're setting up a research um department as well so we could we the flexibility that we've built into into our metaverse especially with our custom domes is, is these custom domes can be can be different styles so they can be all the way up to ue5 they could be ue4 assets they could be lower resolution we, we could have voxels in there so there's a lot of of, of stuff that we are researching and we want to build up that and bring on board 
as many projects as we can. If we can just take people's assets and import them in, that would be great. But we know in reality, if we just allowed that from day one, maybe the program would crash and it wouldn't be the best user experience. Yeah. So, so we have to we have to research that, see what the limits are, put out a style guide, um, and we'll just progress it just like we're, we're, we're building the rest of the game. Okay. And I suppose moving on then to the roadmap, where, where are we now in terms of, I know you guys have a mobile game, which the mobile game is going to come out first, isn't it? That won't be the same as the desktop game that's going to come out. What's the rough timelines on them or the latest timelines? These things always move, I suppose. I was playing our mobile game the other night. Yeah. So it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, when, it's, when do I get the download the uh, SDK or? <laughs> yeah. So the public testing will be, yeah. and you know, look, you're, you're an OG with us. And so we, uh, we need to make sure that we get you testing on it as early as we uh, broaden our testing group from internal to anyone yeah. that's you know within our community or to small segments of our community as as well. So that would be coming up in a couple of months, I imagine. We're going to start releasing uh, testing groups, et cetera. But yeah, man, there's there's a there's a fun mobile game in the works, and that's going to be our. Yeah. Uh, it's a tribute to a existing gaming genre, which is a lot of fun, uh, and it's going to be. <clears throat> Uh, our first play to earn. So we're testing out and building out that market place for us. Uh, it'll be something that incorporates really well with the desktop launcher project that Rob is, uh, has talked a little bit about, but there's so much to that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a fun game. I, I have, I have an, I, I played all a hundred levels of our game. Uh, a few months ago when, when we were in City AM in, in London. And um, I now have an 18-hour flight, to, well, an 18-hour journey in a few weeks to Consensus. So now we, we've put a lot of graphics into it. I don't know if you're coming to Consensus, Paul. No, I won't get to Consensus, but I'm hoping to go to Rare Bloom in October. I think you yeah. guys might be going to that one as well. We'll, we'll, we'll be there as well. But, yeah, if, if anybody is at that Cardo, Cardano event, in consensus um we'll have the mobile game there um, and i'm building five five other demos small small demos of of um, the unreal engine 5 version of the game as well so josh and i will be there with with, with our laptops um and, and our tablets showing everybody the game it's like a sneak preview nice anyone that gets there that gets footage and wants to send it to me feel free no, to fine. do so <laughs> no, no footage, cameras are banned <laughs> for your eyes only. So just to go on that, the timeline then is we'll get the mobile game first. Will that be later this year? Or will it be into next year before we say the public rather than testing and then the actual desktop version of the game, the metaverse play to earn? The yeah, so game. it is important to differentiate the two. The, the mobile game is more of... Uh, I would categorize that within Cornucopius as a Cornucopius brand product, but it's a it's in the mini mini game sector, and so we're going to have hopefully over time a variety of different mini games that we introduce into our realm. And so this is a mobile game; it's a mini game, but it is not the island where you have your home bubble and you have the themed zones and all the things that we're talking about with our land sale and things like that. So it's it's very different. But that being said. It is a way for us to get onto a mobile device. It's a way for us uh, to access a partnership that we have with Tingo Mobile that has 10 million subscribers and get play to earn going with a large community of Africa where it provides a lot of value for them. Uh, so there's a variety of things that that enables strategically, which is great. Uh, while we're also having another team that's working in uh, using, using agile processes to develop our actual uh, main game. Yeah. So and it, and I think in terms of technology, it, you know, as well as being blockchain agnostic, we're also technology agnostic. You know, the, the desktop launcher is being built with .NET. We're building APIs. Um, we, we will also be um, creating the game, as we've said, in Unreal Engine 5. But the mobile game is actually being built in Unity, um, which, you know, is Unity and, and Unreal Engine 5. They couldn't be more different. But you know yeah. we have a way of being completely interoperable with with all these technologies and bringing them 
together with the shared user profile. Which would both be on that, yeah, launcher together, right? Yep. Okay, and I suppose, does the current market, this is something I'll be asking all projects going forward, the current market conditions, is that affecting the roadmap? Is that pushing it out? Or are you guys full steam ahead, essentially? Or how are you fixed for this? It doesn't it affect does. the roadmap. It doesn't affect the roadmap. What you, yeah, go it, on, it's, it's got, an, yeah, it's a tough one. So does it affect what we're, we're, we're full steam ahead, no matter what? Like we've got promises to the community. We've got to develop a game. We've got to do all of these things. We've got to figure it out, right? So as a company, we march onward. Uh, the market conditions do make things a little bit challenger, more challenging when you look at uh, a land sale. So for example, we're looking at a land sale right now and we've been considering pricing. We've mentioned it all along, anywhere from 100 to 5,000 US dollars. What I've been talking about more recently in videos is around 200 to 5,000 dollars is our price point. Now, when you're collecting ADA and the value of that is incredibly volatile and you don't know where that's gonna land, it really makes it harder because somebody that's sitting on a large bag of ADA, for example, is affected, uh, could be affected in a different way than somebody that's just possibly gonna go out and utilize cash to buy their ADA at the moment of the sale. And so we're thinking, we're, we're really trying to be considerate of our entire community there. Um, but the reality is there's there's several tensions. And so to make a business decision, number one, we're looking at, okay, we've made these promises to community. We want to deliver a game. We're all passionate about what we're doing. We want to get the funds uh, there so that we can implement our mission, right? And that's that's a lot of what this is, is we're doing a land sale to raise revenue so that yeah. we can go out to market and fulfill our promises. And so... There's that tension along with the fact that we don't have currently a stable coin that we could raise funds in. That would make it a little bit easier. It'd be just like, hey, we're we're ready to accept DJED, you know, or right. or whatever stable coin it may be that's on Cardano. Uh, that would that would solve some problems there. But yeah, we're we're trying to figure out how to make it as fair as possible for everybody and still accomplish what we need to do. That's the main thing. Look, we're building a game. That's number one. And we, we always say that. And our community is really important to us. And so those promises matter. Yeah, I think something that really showed what you think of the community and trying to build up. You guys have a really loyal, really good community. I'm in there in the Discord as well and try and check in as often as I can was the Javelin sale earlier in the year. Things didn't go right. And to me, look, things are always going to, uh, there's going to be issues within a project. And I always look at, how does the project respond or how do they react and move forward when these issues do come up? And what you done was airdropped one javelin to everyone who was in the queue that day, which I thought was unbelievable. That doesn't happen. I would say 99% of projects would have just rescheduled, but you guys went out of pocket because of the way with ADA, when you're sending any transaction on Cardano, you also had to send 1.4 something ADA with every NFT. So yeah. that was a huge we gesture did. to show what you wanted to do with your community. So, um, yeah, fortunately I, our partner, I don't want to not give any, uh, credit where it's due. Mm -hmm. Uh, derp was a partner on our tech for that. So dirt birds, they have some phenomenal tech and it was very early stage. The reality is we, we had a deal with them where we were working on that, but derp, they honored the, uh, the 1.4 ADA fee on their end. And then okay. we ate the, uh, you know, around 1 million in potential yeah, revenue. The, the, the net uh, result was, was, was the, the javelin was, we were selling it for 95 ADA. In the end, we get, we, we were selling 9,000 of them because there was 12,400 people in the queue. We increased the amount that we gave away. So we actually gave away 12,400 for free. And, and like you say, derps, gave away the ADA that came along with it. And the total, the total value that we gave to the public was, was over a, a actual million dollars of, of free NFTs, which was. Yeah. Um, and that was a hit in the gut. I mean, yeah. look, there's no, <laughs> there's no, uh, getting around that. That was a r incredibly hard day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. a very, very difficult day and i would say that we probably all as a team so we sit in a war room together 
watching it all go down. We're communicating in a in a you know group hangout. Everybody's on video and we're talking about everybody's doing everybody's got their own individual roles and we're watching what's happening and we're seeing things break down right in front of us and it's tragic, right? It, that was a stressful day, I would say. Oh God, it was so bad. Yeah, it was, it was so bad. Like and, and now we have PTSD from it. So the slightest thing starts to hint at going wrong and I want to run and hide in a corner in the fetal position, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I know what, what uh, I was touching on that was just the way you reacted to it and responded, told me a lot about what you're yeah, trying to you. build oh, look, and gave a lot of confidence in, in you guys that you're looking at community first in yeah, that case. Well, so, it was always community first. I, yeah. The decision in the end first was, kind of thing, but we've also, it, we've it got to come easy. through with a product too. Yeah. So there's a balance there. Cause it's also yeah. like, yeah, community first let's take care of these guys they've been sitting around waiting for a while we'll figure out how to raise revenue in another sale we'll do something let's just take care of these guys so that's what we decided we took care of our community but at the same time yeah we gotta we we're also community first is also delivering on our mission and coming through with building a team that costs money to build a team because people don't work for free so uh so there's a tension there and you know, it's not exactly an easy decision, but that's that's what we chose in that moment. And now uh, we're moving forward towards the land sale, and there's hopefully some uh, uh, revenue to be raised there so we can keep building. Yeah, so you touched on the price there. You can't rate because I suppose the wide variation in price is what out there. There's going to be different types of land. Will they all go different for sale? Sizes, on this? Different sizes, different rarities, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, and will there be different rarities on each individual land type? So a lot of other metaverses and stuff like that, it's a parcel that you get or an estate or something like that. Will there be a year version of that? So will there be rarities of that? And a lot of other ones, it's just there's one standard size. There isn't variations of the same type of land. Yeah, so, so we don't have land that you merge together. And, and so we have different sizes. So it just just like in the real world, you know, you would buy your land plot size. So we have five different sizes. Um, our our largest size, which we we will reveal this week in Kopi Cafe, is is extremely large. So you won't need to buy multiples. So when you compare our prices with other projects, you're not really comparing like for like. You you need to kind of compare maybe nine of other parcels to, to possibly look at one of our larger ones if, if you want to com- compare prices for prices but yeah we will have rarities and, and the rarities do have a difference because the the rarities in will determine which plot that you can go because because we're building we we don't have all our maps built at the moment but when we do release those maps those those people that end up minting the mythics and and it's still a random choice so it's the same price for the small for for the for the the common or the uncommon eventually all those will go forward and you will end up with the small plot in 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 our metaverse but if you end up um minting the mythic one then you will get first choice first chance to actually test when we go on to test net and then later on when we actually release the maps, you will have first choice to go into our maps, look around all our different maps and all our different sectors, and you will have first choice of choosing your individual plot. And then we'll, we'll, we will go down the rarities. Um, so, so yeah, having that mythic is really important. If you want the best spot in the game, you'll have a few weeks to look at all our maps across all our different zones, and, and then you'll go and, and, and literally, you'll be spoiled for choice if you have that mythic. Okay, I like that. Um, a lot of other sales, what we see is you just you get assigned your location, but in this one, you're assigned a rarity, and then that defines when you get to stand in the queue, I suppose, to pick pick your land, yeah, pick yeah. your area. Correct. And this is uh, just to clarify, this is our themed zones. So we're going to have three themed zones that are for sale in this first land sale. Shortly after, we have a different type of land for sale. That is uh, our custom domes where you can do a variety of different things with those. It's more entrepreneurial in nature. Uh, they tie into the city uh, that's going to be built eventually into the metaverse aspect of our game and, and B2B. Uh, so there's there's a lot of uh, things there that will be unveiled soon. 
But this, what Rob is talking about is five sizes, five rarities. Uh, so there's 25 different NFT types that will get you access to the uh, great cornucopious land rush of 2022, where wow. you'll be running around, uh, not running around, you'll be navigating around a map looking for the spot you want to uh, select. It'll be an amazing event. All the information yeah. will be in, in Kopi Wiki. And on the, so will that be one day of land sale? Will all the different types be sold on the same day or will they be individual sales for the different types of land? Because if they're different prices, I suppose it's, they're not all going to go together, are they? It's a great question. Go on, Josh. I'm oh, sorry. I, I was actually, I, I, you lost me for a second there. Ask the question again. So will you be, so you said there, are, I think five different types of land in the sale will that be five individual days five, or will they five sizes be yeah okay sorry that is a great question uh so currently the plan is that we will do a three-day sale so uh there will be two sales on a well I, I don't know the exact days just yet but it'll be two two-day sales and one two two size uh sales in one day yeah. um and then one one size sale so it'll be over three days, we'll do these sales. And each sale, so just to give you an idea, each sale, we have to go through each of our roles. So there's four roles in Discord that we're spreading the, the sales out to. Uh, and this is to encourage, incentivize uh, participation within our community uh, that, that is meaningful, right? So what we, again, back to community, we're trying to incentivize and gamify the development of a self-moderating community that is inspired and creative and fun right and so doing that well okay if we if we made all the land available for only the public it would be chaos right it would be just chaos in there so obviously you can't go to that extreme if we made all the land available to only ogs well then clearly you're not going to have a growing community it's just going to be ogs right so we spread that out according to different roles and things that we want to incentivize within our community. And we, you know, there's no perfect solution for all of you out there that have had complaints about the way we do things, et cetera. We're really trying to look at our community and take care of everyone, but there is no perfect solution, period. We're, we're trying so to learn from our mints, from other people's mints. It's really, really difficult. Yeah, it's not easy. And so what we've done is we've broken it up into roles. Uh, there's the OG role. They're going to get a certain allocation of land that they get to purchase. Then there's the NFT holders, the Bubble Jet and the Javelin and the OG NFTs. And then there's the um, people that have been in our community for more than 30 days. And then there's the public. And so we're spreading out the allocations, uh, uh, land allocations to those. And so each size will have to go through four role uh sales so okay. if there's two sales in a day that means there's that our entire team is in the war room watching what's going on running eight yeah. different sales basically uh to execute so we're um, gonna need some uh we're gonna need some water some some food delivered to us some yeah. uh some, some, some anti-anxiety medications a, a couple yeah. whipped cream <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, that's definitely going to be a busy few days yeah, but holy crap. On, oh by on the way those... i'm taking those days off rob I, I meant to tell you i won't be around so <laughs> yeah no you don't want to leave it in my charge <laughs> just on the roles then so people have to people who aren't in the discord or part of the communities yet you have to be a part of the discord to yeah. get them roles and then you register for the nft marketplace i might do a video on that actually registering for the marketplace and stuff like that separate to this one but is that the way it is you have to be part of the discord yeah I, I, and process. i know a lot of people are either not comfortable with discord or they're not familiar with discord but what discord allows us to do like we say with the different roles and it allows us to register previous nfts but not only that what we've learned is is that if anything should go wrong um, and we know things can go wrong but with our last mint that only lasted 20 seconds we know things can go right but should anything go wrong, 
because they've come via Discord, we have direct communication with those individual groups and the individual people, and we can talk one to one or one to many in the different groups. So, and we can, and we also email people to say, look, you've been accepted. You're going to get an NFT, or you're, or, or unfortunately, this time you, you're not acceptable. So, our technology, our marketplace, has really come along for, from those very early mints. Yeah, okay. it allows us to have customer support, which has created yeah. a whole new slow problems uh, because now we need a <laughs> customer support team to walk people through it. But that being said, yeah. you hope that the NFT uh, tech works swimmingly as it did. I mean, yeah, Rob mentioned it, 20 seconds. We had yeah. thousands of people in that tier. It sold out in 20 seconds. I was talking to an influencer, a content creator that we're friends with, and he submitted his transactions thir- for that sale 35 seconds in and did not get one. Yeah, he had a really uh, So there are people that are really complaining saying, you know, <laughs> tech, the, the tech. So if I don't have super fast internet, I'm at a disadvantage. Okay, yeah, you're right. And guys, we can't make it perfectly fair for everyone. We're just trying to do our best to make it as fair as we can. Yeah, that, look, you'll we never be able to do it exactly right for everyone. There'll always be different disadvantages, advantages for different yeah. people. So you just have to cater for the majority. It can never be everyone, unfortunately, but that's just yeah. the way it goes. But on the roles then, so I, hold, full disclaimer, I hold an OG and I own a bubble jet and a javelin as well. Mm-hmm. So can I, how many land parcels or whatever we call them, how many of them can I try and mint? So I can go into the OG sale. Can I also try and go in then to the bubble jet or the javelin sale? No, no. So, so as an OG, you will get first attempt, but that doesn't mean to say you're guaranteed to mint that there is only a, a percentage of property and it's quite a small percentage that the OGs can mint. So even the OGs are competing against each other, but if you were not successful, then you are then able, because you will, will have an NFT, you will then be able to um, go into the second tier. So you'll be able to mint again. Well, we'll try and mint again. But the, the second that any of those, so any, any of those tiers, if they're unsuccessful, they will carry through to the next tier. But when you do successfully mint, if you're on the first or second, yeah, you can only mint one. Okay. And is it one piece of land per person then in each individual sale? Or can I get two pieces or? We don't that? have that fully. This, I, so what I would say on that is, um, most likely it's going to be very limited because we want to really spread it out and have a lot of users getting an opportunity to own yep. land. That's that's the thing. Uh, but we, we don't have everything fully defined just yet. Uh, and you would think that we would because we really are targeting soon, okay. very soon. Yeah. That's but the next question. It's there's a lot of out. moving targets, and so we're, we've got some final decisions. How fast make. are you, Paul? I mean, the, the last sale went in 20 seconds. So, I mean, it's going to be, you know, really difficult yeah. for... For one person, even if you're, we, we've seen from the last one um, that people are trying to cheat the system, and we've we've detected this, and we we you know we we put some fixes in place to stop that. Um, the system itself is already capable of blocking a lot, but a lot of people go into Discord and they're all bragging, "Oh, I managed to do this, or I managed to do that." <laughs> well, thanks, but you won't be able to do Let's it again. Let's get the patch <laughs> fixed. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks, thanks very much. <laughs> yeah um yeah i seen that in the og sale the last one as well i think i was 37 seconds lucky enough if i was in the public one for that i wouldn't have got one it was either 27 or 37 i think 37 seconds when i locked in the yeah. order that was a question that came up do people need to refresh the page or not because that's where it was no. your internet connection comes into it you don't no, you- no, you don't need to. We we use something called R signal, and and, and that pushes it direct. If if you okay. refresh, you would you will actually then have to do another another read from the database, and and you'll be at the back of the queue. So I would not. That's refresh. what I done. I refreshed, and that's where I came in at thirty seven seconds. So if I don't refresh, I could have made that twenty seconds maybe. Yeah, no. But that, that's good to know because I think there was different. Some people were saying yes, refresh. Others were saying no. So it's good yeah. to hear directly from ye that um you don't have to that so, was a different platform yeah that was a different that was a different scenario entirely okay. yeah entirely different platform that was what, and on what the when which is the big question soon is all i'm getting is it is soon weeks is it months or it will, <laughs> um, it will, I'm a, it will be 
It would be Q2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Q2. Okay. We'll give you Q2. Uh, hopefully not the end. I'm away at the very end of Q2. So hopefully just before that. You'll yeah. Be, you'll so, be okay. Like, if you're away at you the know, end, you'll be okay. There could, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm getting more out of Rob here. I know. That's why I was like, <laughs> Rob, hey, you're going, you're going to the pub before you come back for Cardano with Paul. You keep it to two drinks. Yeah. My, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay that. okay i was just finishing up this video getting ready to post it and i seen the team have now announced officially the dates for the land sale so it's great to be able to put that in june 3rd to june 5th is when the land sale is going to happen like we talk about in the call here there is five different sales so there will be two on two days and then one on one of the days now this is dependent on cardano blockchain congestion the sales may need to be pushed out an extra day or two depending on how quick the chain is actually minting the nfts and how smooth the sales go so june 3rd to 5th is what it's set for cause a slight issue for me as that falls on my 10th wedding anniversary and we're making plans to go away and stuff so i'll have to try and work something out there but minting tiers then they are as we mentioned there is different tiers for getting in you can see the og tier gets in first then there is anyone holding a bubble jet og bubble jet or javelin then cornucopius t1 this is people in the server for more than 30 days and then everyone else gets in then so there's different allocations for each tier and just because the this the og is going first that doesn't mean that every og is guaranteed one because there will only be a small allocation within each tier if you don't get one in your tier you can try in the next tiers as well so i'll cover all of this in a summary video when i put out my next cardano updates video as well probably tomorrow friday yeah. <laughs> i see i'm actually moving on in time i don't want to take up too much of your time sure, i'm gonna look at yeah. some of the questions that the community put in i think we've touched on lots of them the bridge was one um any plans on a centralized exchange for the copy token or is that it's a good question waiting for the bridge or... yeah no that's uh that's not entirely bridge necessary or bridge dependent but uh, it would help that's for sure uh i would say that um we're in talks with a few but i can't announce anything at this point um we haven't signed any agreements and and made the move so it's it's hard to announce, but yeah, that's definitely a conversation that's that's happening. Okay, I suppose some centralized exchanges act as a bridge as well if they allow you to withdraw onto either chain. So if they let you withdraw onto the Cardano yeah. chain or onto BNB, some people could use that as their bridge. Uh, so what else have I got? Gills. We won't get too deep into this. I might do a video and try and bring on some of the gills within Cornucopius, but can you explain what a guild is, or if I'm pronouncing that right, or why people would get involved? I in think it? we have four or five of them now at this point well, already. Two, is... two of them are merged together. So, so uh, two, two, yeah, they yeah, merged. So, that's right. So, so guilds are guilds are a, a kind of like a a, a friendship group or a, a self organizing group of 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 people, but really, really well organized. You know, there's the structures and the hierarchies. Um, and and currently, you know, we we don't set these up. These are com are completely community led. We have we have two really big ones at the moment on, on Cornucopius. Um, one's called the Knights, and one's called the Mafia, and and they both have over three hundred members each. They they're creating DAOs. The the they're an entire community um, themselves. They have their own Discord group. They they have their own Twitter. They have weekly meetings. It's absolutely incredible the ecosystem that's building on on top of our ecosystem. Um, and when they're in the game, they they will um, purchase land and and they will do daily tasks together and and they'll be really organised and, and and they will then probably have assets that they will rent out to themselves or uh, and and basically the, the set up at all different levels so if you've never played a, get a game before or or you come into a game especially like crypto where where you are on the surface you may think if i want to go racing i, do, I don't have enough money to to buy a, um, a bubble jet or, or a javelin i don't have an nft or or maybe i want to try out what these games are about with, without having to to fork out um the currency because i don't know the blockchain you can actually then within the guild rent the the assets off the guild members or they will give them to you or, or however however they're set up 
and that they're just basically a really friendly community that share assets among each other and and kind of go on raids together and and they oh, yeah i mean it's just it's absolutely okay. incredible that that with our level the game where we are at the moment that we have two of these huge guilds that are, that are forming around us yeah it's something i need to dig deeper into and i might try and bring them on to for them to explain what they're doing in the game as well so yeah. sure we'll send them your way man yeah I, I have talked to some of them before as well um i'm in the discord for the mafia one uh, as well so i just haven't got to go through everything just yet but it's definitely something i need to do quick questions yeah. then the nft fruit sale the fruit tree sale is coming up tomorrow question on that was will that actually grow fruit in the game and then can that be used as a resource can i sell that in the game yeah so for anybody that's watching i'm guessing this is getting published on friday so it would all uh, would have already occurred right the uh NFTs. yeah it'll probably be thursday friday when this goes yeah, I, don't, I just didn't want anybody to get super excited that they could participate in that oh, one yeah, yeah, one. yeah by watching the video terrible. but yes yeah, so, um <clears throat> To answer your question, it's going to be fruit trees planted in Senegal. So any of the ADA that we receive from that sale is going to be used to buy. Uh, it's going to be given to Veritree, who's going to um, make sure that the trees are planted in Senegal. So it's pretty cool because the first trees were were a little bit different. The NFT to tree sale was a little bit different. It was also Senegal, but this one is fruit trees. And so it's, it's empowering the community with nourishment, uh, yeah. which is pretty awesome. And within the actual game, then, will these grow fruit in the game? So if we were lucky enough to get an NFT, we can use them in the Cornucopius game as well. Will they grow fruit that I can we've sell? Not, uh, we've not announced what the utility in the game will be, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, the, yeah. the utility and the, the, so we have announced that there are uh, future airdrops for the tree yeah. holders. Okay. And uh, what we have not announced is what those airdrops will be. Yeah. Um, but it will have utility in the game. Okay, uh, that kind of brings on, I'm not going to get into it now, but the future of play to earn and sustainability over the long term and creating your own economy within the game. We might do a full interview or talk on that at some stage as well. Kind of the sure, longer absolutely. term game for these type of things. We won't get absolutely. into it now. I'll finish Again, up. we want to be back on your show a little more regularly than every six months. You yeah. helped us kickstart this thing. You were you were there in the very beginning, and it was we really appreciate you and what you're doing. So definitely, yeah, definitely we'll, sorry that we've taken so long to get back to, back together with you. But yeah, no, we'll set up something more regular as the next few months. You're probably going to have a lot more happening as well. So we can definitely do that. We'll finish up on the final one on the bubble jets. Can they be damaged in the game? So if we have some bad drivers and they crash, can they be damaged? Is there maintenance? Do they need this to be question, repaired? This we'll, question laugh, keeps, we'll laugh it because we was, had a, another interview this morning. Keep, keep this question up. keeps yeah. coming up. I mean, I mean it's if, great. It's if, great. if people keep asking, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have more conversations internally about You'd it. You'd have to bring in damage. <laughs> yeah, a question that came up this yeah, morning from another you content for, creator was, you know, I want to see that GTI can can uh die that it can explode and and it's it's no longer usable in the game and we're like yeah so i mean it it's he's like you know it adds some drama adds some tension adds that sort of thing um and we're we've talked through that we don't have a final solution yet but there are um some pretty exciting things that could be done with that obviously um uh, yeah. we just haven't we haven't yet determined that path what you don't want is obviously if they're um, getting uh, completely taken out of the game, right? Uh, and and they can't now. They can't race. They've just got a track record and a history, a racing yeah. history. Well, what you don't want is all of a sudden there's no racing community because all the vehicles <laughs> have been taken no out, right? And they're too yeah. expensive for me to get in and buy. So then you have to create a whole economy around it to support. Well the justification of losing a $20,000 vehicle in a race, it better be pretty strong that there's a possible reward. That's, you know, yeah. whatever. I'm, so I'm, you get the not, point. Like, we're not lots saying they're worth $20,000 whatsoever, but I mean, if we introduce a whole ecosystem now, you've got to go and repair these things as well. Careful what you wish for. Or, 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 <laughs> I do or, believe one exactly, of our vehicles yeah. sold for around 33,000. So yeah, yeah the, the, you know, I, I do say that uh, in jet, it's not an ingest. That's that did occur. Um, yeah, we don't know what's yeah. going to happen. It's possible. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know where it's going to go in but the yeah, future. The, but... Yeah, the, 
exactly this is not a price discussion it's more of a um yeah. how do we cultivate a racing ecosystem yeah and and really get people fired up about that and well, we, we will definitely yeah. have governance within our game so you know that that could definitely be up for a vote and and if it if it passes a vote then we'll have a conversations about it okay yeah. and i know i said that was the last one but it's just reminded me of something someone <laughs> asked, really asked renting land so if i get some of the bigger pieces of land yeah. Can I rent out segments of that or parts of that land? Do I have the ability to yeah, break so, it up? Or so it's actually in the Wikipedia, and you can actually the renting is is applicable to all different types of land. So you'll be able to put houses on there, upgrade your houses to to have multiple rooms that you can upgrade them even further. Or the our houses grow really big into hotels, but obviously that depends how big your land is. But yeah, every plot of land is capable of of being able to rent individual rooms to other players and then other players can come onto your land if you turn that into farmland and they'll be able to to, to participate and and uh, you know you'll have your own little commerce available on your land there's a lots and lots of utility for, for landowners nice. might have to start up an airbnb business within cornucopias <laughs> ha have a look at seasonal keys in in the wikipedia that that'll be that'll be the the, the search term yeah okay um so anything i've left out here that you want to put out or you know just hey there's a, a video link that you'll provide in the description below we'll get that to you here in a couple of days that is our cinematic that's a, an illustration it's not it's it's the real deal like i've literally we walked we had our dev walk around in the world he's created yeah. the other day for us so that is not just a cinematic but it is actual gameplay ready to a certain degree right so we're show showcasing uh npc characters all the new building styles we're showcasing travel and there's cool travel that goes between the uh the different islands we're showcasing an entire sector that is just absolutely brutal we're showcasing our new cloud technology our new water technology that's built on ue5 the water is remarkable. It makes me want to fly fish. So like, there's just an amazing video for you guys to watch in the yep. link below. So please check that out. And, and all the all the different zones that they're they're all different utility. Um, they all look different from the quintessential um, English heritage part to the, you know, to to the dry wastelands of, of um, you know old wild westerns all the way up to the eastern zone which was the blossom trees they're all going to look so different each of the different maps over 30 maps will be produced when we release the first three zones the zones are made up of multiple sectors each of those themselves are huge eight kilometers by eight kilometer maps yeah the the, the it takes 40 minutes to walk across an eight kilometer map just we just so, one sector, yeah. And we we so have okay. thirty. That's, that's the first se sector that we'll be given a tour of that was built in a very remarkable amount of time. So yeah, check that very out. Nice. And, yeah, thank you, Paul. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that myself. And even the travel video that went out. I don't know, was that a week ago or what it was now? I really like the Stargate in that. Yeah. It reminds it's me of Stargate, Stargate and Stargate yeah, yeah. Atlantis. Okay. I was a fan of the shows years ago, so uh, it was a nice nice touch to see that in there. But all the links, the Discord, the Copy Wiki, everything like that, I'll put them down below. People who want to get into the land, you do need to get into Discord. So the links for that will be below. I appreciate your time, guys. We'll definitely catch up. We'll make it a lot shorter space of time before we catch up again. And uh, anyone new, subscribe, comment, questions below, and I will put them to the team the next day. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Paul. Bye -bye. See you later.